G'day guys, Will Kitchen here. Welcome back to another video. Now, as you may be able to tell already, we're not on the water. The weather has been absolutely terrible lately for offshore and even estuary fishing. So today we are on dry land, and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to walk you guys through our boat. And uh, we're gonna do a full walkthrough, talk about it, do the pros and cons, and show you through it. A lot of people have been commenting and asking about the boat, so we thought we'd just show you all through it. So hopefully it's interesting for you. I've also got Dad here who's behind the camera at the moment, but he's gonna be talking about it as well and talking about the motor. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy and we'll get straight into it. We'll walk you through the outside first, then everything on the inside and, and talk about it as well. So yeah, let's get straight into it. All right, so as you can see here, the boat is a Haynes Hunter V17C. So that means it's 17 feet or five meters long, 5.1 meters to be exact. We've got that on a Red Coast Sportsman trailer, which suits it perfectly. And if I come around here on the back, we have an old Johnson 115 horsepower two-stroke on it. So Dad's gonna to talk to you more about that soon, but uh, we'll leave that for a little bit later in the video. All right, so these Haynes Hunter boats are very well known for being a really smooth ride. And this one is absolutely amazing in any wind chop and anything like that. And that's due to this deep V hole that they have, as you can see there. So that cuts straight through it perfectly and very, very smooth ride. We love it. Um, and that's why they're such a popular boat. And that's where the V in the name comes from, V17, is this deep V hole. So hopefully you can see that there. But yeah, makes it a very, very smooth ride and they're a very sought after hull. So as I said, my dad, Daryl, is here as well. So I'm gonna invite him in to talk a bit more about his boat for you guys. So g'day everyone. Will's just asked me to come in and talk about the boat a little bit. Um, the boat was built in around the early 1980s, probably around 1981. Um, my father and I purchased the boat um, second hand in 1991. So we've had it for now 30 years. Um, brilliant boat, fantastic in any kind of rough conditions. Uh, as Will said before with the deep V hull, um, it certainly just cuts through any chop. Um, you know, as you've seen from Will's videos, we go offshore and we get ourselves into some pretty decent seas at time. And uh, at all times, you know, I feel safe in this boat. There's no doubt about it. Um, about 10 years ago, uh, I had the whole entire boat rebuilt on the inside. So every bit of wood, the transom, the stringers, the bunks, everything got replaced. So basically the internal part of this boat is only about 10 years old. Um, I'll run through a few things that we changed with the boat. We tried to keep it as original as possible, uh, but I did add a couple of little things and they're only little things to, to change it up a bit and I'll run through them now. So one of the things we added uh, once we got the new transom put in was I just got these steps put on the back. Um, I'm not getting any younger, so it just allows me to get in and out of the boat um, a lot easier than, than what I was getting in. So I was really glad we added that. Uh, the other thing is down here, the original hole only had, um, either had one, one bung hole or two, I can't remember exactly, either one or two. Um, it didn't have any bung holes up in the floor up the front. And uh, I felt that that allowed moisture to build up, which allowed that um, the original woodwork to, um, to rot and need replacing. So. When I got it done, I got four bung holes put in um, so that the, the hull drains a lot better than what it did originally. And that seems to be working really well. And I did get one, another bung hole put in up in the uh, front cabin and we'll show you that soon. So this is what Dad was talking about earlier. This is in between the seats in the cabin, the bunk, sorry. This is the bung hole that Dad got put in just to help with the ventilation and draining of the hull. So if any water gets up in here, that can um, help air it out as well. All right, so the first thing we'll talk about here is the bait board that we've got. Now you may think that's simple, it's just something you cut your bait on, but it really can affect your fishing experience. So we've actually had this custom made, and that's for a couple of reasons. We really like this bait board. It's extremely simple, but we had it custom made because firstly, the size of it. Usually if you just get one, say from BCF or somewhere like that, they're a lot too wide. So we got this made specifically this width so we can still stand either side and fish and it's not out here in front of us. Now the other thing is that we really love about this is that it's actually removable. So 
If we're offshore fishing, we can have this on. But then if we want to go do some whiting fishing, for example, it's as simple as just popping it up and you can leave it at home. So that's just attached here on the boat. It's nice and sturdy. And then simple as just sliding it back in again when you want to go. It's also got this removable board so you can clean it, you can take it off. Simply just pop it back on again when you're done, ready to go fishing. And that has a drainage hole in it so that will drip down out the back of the boat. As you can see, it's also got these three rod holders on it so it's just a little bit of extra rod storage. And it's got a little section here at the back where you can put any hooks or lures or anything that you've cut off. All right, so now we'll do a little bit more of a walk through, through the boat while we're up here. Um, and I think we'll start from the back and work our way forwards. So starting from the back, there's these seats here, which are good. You can either sit on those if you're driving around slowly, just cruising, or if you have a couple of mates or, or kids in the boat or something. So they're nice and comfy. Now the boat around the gunnel has four rod holders. So one here, one down in the back corner on both sides. So that's good for rod storage or even while you're trolling or fishing if you have a bait out or something like that. All right, so down the back of the boat here, we have a dual battery system. So we have, in this black box here, we have one. And as you can see, another one on the other side there. We can control it here, so we can either choose to have them both running with the switch there, or we can put it to either side and just run with one. So when we're offshore fishing and we're running our electronics like our sounder, we can just put it on one battery and uh, use the power from that one and know that we're going to be safe and the other one's not going to go flat. So even if one does go flat, the other one will still be fine. We also have the back well down there with the bilge pump, so all the water that hits the deck runs down into there and we can bilge it out, of course. And this is our oil bottle for the oil injection for the two-stroke motor. So that's where we keep that strapped down to the floor and that's sturdy there. So on both sides of the boat, we also have storage areas down here. Um, now, Dad was telling me that this isn't just wood, this is actually fiberglass that's been built into the boat and been covered in the marine carpet. So that makes it a lot stronger and more sturdy. It's not gonna wobble at all, that is solid as. There's plenty of space in here. We keep our nets, uh, gaff, you know, anything else, knives, cutting boards, um, fish bats, all that sort of stuff in the sides there. And it's nice and safe. It doesn't rattle around or anything like that. So that's really handy. Right. So this boat, the canopy that we have on this boat, Dad's actually just got this one uh, redone because it was getting a bit old and tattered. But it's uh, very handy because firstly, if you undo these on the side, these straps, unhook those from both sides, it can actually fold down. So we use that a lot when we're trying to drift out on the reef or even for whiting sometimes and things like that in the estuary because if the wind picks that up, you can drift a bit quicker. But if you drop that down, it'll slow your drift down or help slow it down anyway. Then if it's raining or a bit too hot and sunny, you can put that back up and flip it down again. So easy as that. And the other handy thing is, if you just unzip this on both sides, you can unclip it. You can fold that back and roll it up, clip it up with these. And you can actually stand there with your head out over the windshield and stand up and drive if you want. So that's really handy too. So this is what it's like when the uh, canopy's folded up. So as you can see, it just clips on behind me there. You can roll it up and then you can stand out here, see everywhere around you as you're driving around. And as I said, especially good for offshore. You can be manning the wheel here and you've got plenty of space to just stand up freely. So yeah, very good. So before we go up to the front of the boat, the dash and the cabin, the last thing I'll talk about is these seats. So we like them because you can spin them around the other way, as you can see, they swivel. You can spin them around if you're driving, if you want to face forwards. Uh, they're height adjustable. But the, the thing we love about being able to swivel them is we can sit out the back like this and fish out the back of the boat, watch our lines. Very comfortable being able to sit down and fish. And we've still got plenty of deck space back here, as you can see. Um, the seats aren't too far back, but yeah, very good. You can sit here and fish and you've still got plenty of space. You can lay your rods down or put them in rod holders and be comfortable fishing. and have a relaxing day out on the water. You'll find with a lot of boats, the seats only face forward. Um, and then once you stand up, you've got to be fishing, standing up the whole time down on the back deck. And if you want to sit down, you can't face your rods. So that's a good thing about these ones. All right, so moving up here to the dash, 
Uh, we've just got all our switches here, so you know your white anchor light, running light, bilge pump, etc. Everything there, just flick a switch. And we've got our radio here as well. That's up behind the dash, but you can obviously detach that, use it, then you just hook it back on there. So up here on the dash, we have all our gauges for the motor. So our, our water, revs, speed, and your trim and tilt. Moving to the left, we've got a bit of a dash here. We can put stuff in, you know, your keys, wallet, whatever, phone. Uh, we've got our one, two in one um, sounder and GPS here. So. As you can see it's a Raymarine, absolutely nothing fancy whatsoever, but the thing is it gets the job done. So that's why we still use it. We're a little bit limited because of the space here on the dash um, with the windshield here and you know not having much space here to have a really big sounder and a big GPS or anything like that. So we just use this. It's nice and simple, nice and compact, but it works a treat. And I'm actually going to do a video on that when I can. So stay tuned for that. So another thing I had built when I had the whole inside of the boat rebuilt was I got these sec this section here built which fits in between the bunks so that that can turn into like a double type bed um, which was good at the time. Will's got a younger brother so uh, they were only uh, young lads at the time so when we wanted to go overnight both myself and the two boys with this insert there could slide up in there with our sleeping bags and, and sleep every night. Of course, for those fishos who have partners who they go fishing with, obviously that may come in handy for that as well. So I'll just put that in now and show you what that looked like. So Dad's just talked you through the bunks in the cabin here, but what he didn't mention was that underneath there's storage here when you lift up those cushions. So that's where we put our life jackets. And when he got the boat redone, he also got this one put in at the front. So it's just a little bit of extra storage there. So you lift, just lift the cushions up and you can get to those. Right, so having this hatch up the front is also a very handy feature. Because you can come up here, you can get to your anchor, and it's especially good in rough seas. Now in calm water, you can walk around the side, as I'll show you in a second. But this is really good for safety, as I said, in rough seas when you're offshore. Or if you're not comfortable walking around the side, you can just come straight up with the boat, get to your anchor, pull it up, drop it down, and you're still inside the boat, you're still safe. So very, very good having that. But yeah, as I said, you can walk around the outside of the boat here if conditions allow, if it's calm weather or if you're just in the river or something like that. So yeah, very handy. Up the front of the boat here, we also have our anchor light, our white light. And we usually have an aerial here as well for the radio, but because of this roof, it's a bit too short uh, to put that on right now, so we just have it off. But yeah, that's the front of the boat. So Dad, why don't you talk the viewers through what you really, really like about this boat, a few things that you absolutely love, and then maybe something that you don't love as much. Yeah. Um, well, let's start with the things I do love, and what it is is the versatility of this boat. As you, for people who watch Will's videos, you see we do a whole range of fishing. We fish anywhere from half a meter of water up on the banks fishing for whiting, up to fishing to 60 to 80 meters offshore. And this boat um, is that versatile; it can do all of those things. Um, we're, we're safe, I know we're safe when we're out in, in the ocean, I know we're safe when we're offshore, I know the boat can handle sea conditions, um, and as I said, uh, I, I just love how we can do so many things in it. And as I said, from Will's videos, you see all the reef fishing we do and offshore fishing we do, you see all the estuary fishing we do up in the shallows, and then we also get to sleep overnight you'll see us up the Narang River often doing overnight sessions where you know we'll crawl up here in the cabin at night and uh, have a few hours sleep before we got to get up and go home so it's just really versatile on the types and the amount of different types of fishing you can do out of this boat the one thing that um, I probably say is a negative for the boat and all boats have fours and against but with this being a deep V hull the only thing I would say is when offshore and when there's a bit of a sea, it does have the tendency to get a bit of jiggle and a bit of rocking up and down done side to side because of that deep V bottom. Um, but, um, you know, it's nothing uh, terrible. It's nothing that we can't put up with. It's, um, 
it doesn't affect us at all but it does compared to some boats that may sit a little bit better in the water the v17 does rock a little bit side to side so a little bit of character that i like about the boat is something that we didn't actually do to it but uh will's going to video along here and on on the on the gunnel here you can see here all these nicks and grooves all the way along the side here When we first had the boat, this gunnel was the opposite way around. Uh, this part here was the top and this part here was the bottom. Uh, when I had the boat rebuilt, uh, the guys put it on upside down or the other way to what it was. But this used to be on the top. And you can see that the owners before me obviously did a lot of offshore fishing and did a lot of hand lining. Because all these grooves here is cuts in the gunnel from where they would have been cranking up big fish on, on thick line, hand lines, and where it's cut into the gunnel on both sides. So that was like it when we, we purchased the boat, but obviously in its other life, it's had some fishermen in there that used hand lines out on the reef. And uh, I've always liked that little bit of character about it. So, um... so when we originally bought the boat in 1991, it had a 115 blue band Merc on it. And to be quite honest, um, it was not a good motor. By the time we got it, it was 10 years old. Um, what we found out afterwards was there was a bit of corrosion in it. And we did get caught out with it. We were offshore one day, um, not long after we got the boat and the motor played up and we had to get towed in and all those kind of things. So my father and I decided um, at the time that we weren't going to risk that anymore. So we purchased this motor from Winner Marine um, back in 1993. So this motor is now 28 years old. In 28 years, this motor has not let us down. It's been an absolute cracker of a motor. Um, we've never been had any trouble. It's never broken down. We've never had to be towed in. Um, it just seems to keep going. As I said, 28 years now we've had, had the motor um, and it's just been brilliant. Um, we have maintained it. It's been serviced all the time we've had it. Uh, we've really looked after it personally, making sure when it comes home it's flushed, it's washed with warm, hot, salty water to get all the salt off it. It's sprayed with inox or WD-40. Um, and we've done that for 28 years and this motor has just kept going. Uh, sadly, and I feel a bit sadly because my dad and I did buy this motor, is we are in the process now of actually replacing it. Um, I'm looking at retiring in the next couple of years, so I'm just starting to look at uh, what I'm going to do with the boat leading into my retirement. And the first thing I'm going to do is replace this motor, even though it is still running brilliantly. At 28 years, I just feel it's time to to uh, get a new one. So um, we've gone to and we've decided to go with a 115 command thrust mercury motor uh, from Brisbane Marine. Uh, I've done my research on that. A four stroke of course these days, this is an old two stroke motor, which as you would all know, I'm, it's got fuel injection and I'm, uh, oil injection, sorry. And um, you know, I'm still having to buy oil um, the obviously the fuel economy is nowhere near as good as the new motors so I'm looking forward to really getting my new Mercury 115 CT uh, and really seeing what difference that makes to the boat uh, in relation to fuel use and and um, just how, how it um, handles the boat. As I said um, I'm leading into retirement and I'm looking at getting the motor done Another thing I'm thinking about doing um, is getting the gel coat redone on the boat. The boat is now 40 years old. This is original gel coat. Um, it's had lots of changes through its life, the boat. You'll see if Will shows around, there's holes around the side where we've had different seating arrangements. There's been different bait boards. Um, in the older days, it wasn't all as glamorous as what it was now. People screwed things on everywhere. So. All these holes, I wouldn't mind getting them fixed up at some stage, getting the gel coat redone. So leading into the future, I'm gonna start looking into that. So maybe down the track, that might be another video Will can show you when I go into that side of things. So guys, if you ever see this blue and white Hanes out on the water, feel free to come up and say g'day. We've already had a few guys come up and it's really good to have a chat with you guys and show us your fish if you caught any, all that sort of stuff. So it's really good. Feel free to come up and say hello, we love it. So this brings us to the end of the video. 
We absolutely love the boat, don't we, though? We've had some good absolutely. memories in it already, and uh, hopefully there's plenty more to come. So if you want to see any of those, make sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, um, leave a comment. We can do any more gear walkthroughs and uh, things like that as well if you want sounder videos. So yeah, make sure you leave a comment and subscribe for more as well. All right, until next time, guys, tight lines, and be safe and enjoy your time on the water. See you on the water.